Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am in the A10C again today, and this is the uh, A10C Normandy Weapons Practice Mission again. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to go to my master mode, I'm going to go to my guns, and I'm going to use this pipper that basically is the default one here. Let me get my seat situated here. And uh, basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to practice using the guns here. Because I am still getting acquainted with this thing. It's been a long week with work. Haven't had the time I really wanted to to jump in here and do some stuff. So here we go. Pull up, pull up. These guys usually start scurrying the moment you start spraying them. And the only reason I'm leaving labels on at this point is, is there's so many targets there. One thing I've noticed is when you turn labels off, you really can't tell what the hell is dead and what is still alive. When you have the labels on, it's basically telling you, hey, this is a target that isn't dead yet. You know, that's where it is. Call it cheating, whatever, but that's kind of my take on it. So this is starting to get to be fun. I think the only problem I still have is this thing is so goddamn slow. It, it really takes some getting used to going this slow. It's not like it's a, you know, a helicopter is different. You're lower to the ground and it feels like there's movement. When you're going slow in an airplane, man, it's just, oh, very frustrating at times. The other problem I got is getting the reticle to get out of the top of the frame. Altitude, altitude. Pull up, pull up. It's like as soon as I dive down, the reticle dives up. So it gets to be a little bit of a challenge and I'm trying to figure out a way to counter that. But not being too successful. I think one of the other things is too, I was looking at the Chuck's guide for this and as I was reading through it, it really seemed to me like that Chuck's guide is really old. Like it's pro well, technically the A10 was one of the first modules to ever come out, so that probably is the oldest guide that he has, and it doesn't look like it's been updated in a while, because the more modern guides, I can go to a page, say, for Mavericks, and it's an entire two pages of what buttons to press, in what order, you know what I mean, that kind of thing. In like the uh, Harrier, for instance, you know. The A10 guide is just not that detailed, I think, compared to the others. So, taking me a little bit longer to get the hang of some of this. So I guess the key thing is here is get altitude and then dive in and then pull back up to bring that reticle where you want it. So I'm going to dive in a little bit and then I'm going to pull back up and it doesn't, eh, still doesn't move it where I want it. Pull up, pull up. Yeah, I think I hit every one of them guys. And then there are other reticles, and I couldn't find any information on it. I skimmed over the guide, though, don't get me wrong. I might have missed something, because somebody's going to be the first person to be a critic about that. Um, but again, this is no means a tutorial on anything in the A-10. This is me going, hey, man, this is what you can do in the A-10 if you want to fool around in the A-10 and not read a bunch of manuals, you know. Hey, you know. Master mode takes you to guns. I can go left and right on the, what is this, the DMS switch and changes my reticle so I could change to that one. That takes it up there. I can change to that one, which also takes it up there. I could change to this one, which is the lower. I don't understand the significance of why there's a higher and a lower on the HUD, unless one is like for air to air or something. But this works just as well as the other one that I was just Pull using, up. as you'll see. It's just the reticle. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Awfully low that time. 
but again it's just another reticle and it does seem to have some sort of ranging going on on it and it floats around a little bit but yeah people are so overly critical my god like if I paid attention to somebody that much like you know what man Th there's people out there that probably have wives and kids that just sit on the internet and bitch about other people all day long if they spent a quarter of the time with their significant other and their children they would probably be a better a lot better off in life although maybe it's just those people are sad and have sad shitty lives so they sit on the internet just fucking with people you know that's my only thing I can think of, you know. Cause I, it's got to be a sad existence to have to just sit there and criticize every little thing somebody does, you know. What fun is that? To be miserable to people all the time, you know, because you disagree with them. You know, I was just looking at some things the other day on Facebook and... Uh, uh, President Trump. I mean, that, that's an easy way to get in trouble. Just start talking politics. And I just find it amusing how so many people just absolutely hate somebody so bad. And it's like, the dude really has very little bearing on your life, you know? But, whatever. I'm not going to talk politics, but I'm just using that as an example of people getting so triggered and so emotional. But I think we live in this day and age of people feeling that, you know, or I don't know, maybe it's accepted that people are triggered about everything all the time, and everybody has a right to be triggered, you know? Everybody has a right for their voice to be heard, you know? I think that's a problem with the uh, world today is, you know, kids don't get their ass beat anymore. There's no consequences for everything. Everybody gets a participation trophy. Everybody's feelings matter. And th when the fact of the matter is, you know what? <laughs> Most people's feelings don't matter. The world doesn't give a shit about you. And uh, if you don't try to make something of yourself, it's not going to happen. It's just that simple. Nobody deserves a participation trophy. But, again, this is the world in which we live today. And it's just mind-numbing that... Uh, things are the way they are. Don't get me wrong, there's always been trolls on the internet. Hell, 30 years ago when I was doing this, you know, in the early days, people were just, you know, the internet was very new. And uh, people were on bulletin boards instead. It wasn't the internet yet, it was BBS's, and there was always a troll somewhere. It's always somebody to give somebody a hard time, I guess. Altitude, altitude. Pull up, pull up. I guess the bummer about the internet is, is you know, everybody gets bullied, right? Well, those are the ones that can't get called out. Because back in the day when I was younger, you know, somebody talked shit. Somebody eventually, you know, gave them a knuckle sandwich and stuffed their damn foot up their ass and put an end to it, you know? These days you can't do that. You'll get sued. Yeah, the old school doesn't exist anymore. Everybody's got a mouth and they use it. Pull up, pull up. Although it is amusing that the majority that do can cash checks with their with their mouth that their bodies couldn't cash, you know? or write checks with their mouths that their bodies couldn't cash. I guess that's the point I was trying to make. So this is pretty fun though. I'm really enjoying this. I think I like this reticle better than the other one, to be honest. Come on. Oh, these ones are all lined up nice, too. I think the problem is I'm just too damn low. And they're going to start moving. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Well, it looks like I peppered every one of them a little bit, at least. Somebody ought to explode. Pull up, pull up. 
Really? I'm pointed nose up in the air. What do you mean, pull up? She's annoying. Ah, those are still alive. Oh, one, one went poof. Another two should probably go poof. <laughs> but yeah, one guy was being critical of one of my last A10 videos. He's like, oh yeah, you've been playing Sims for 30 years and you dropped a GBU in CCIP mode. <laughs> and I'm like, so? Fuck is the big deal? Altitude, altitude. Pull up, pull up. It worked. That's the funny part. Like, if you go back and watch the video, it worked. I actually blew up the bridge and hit the target I was trying to hit with it. You know, like, what's your point, pal? I just find it amusing, that's all. I think life's too short to take everything that fucking seriously, you know? So what about this Iran stuff, huh, guys? We're going to have some, like, F-22s and uh, F-35s wiping out some Tomcats? Or are some Tomcats going to give us some shit from Iran? That's what I'm curious about. I mean, I hope nobody, you know, I don't want to see any casualties on either side, to be honest. But Iran's really pushing some buttons over there. And they are the only ones left with uh, F-14s that are in service. And uh, we've done our best to take out our uh, components and whatnot. That's why the, the couple of the F-14s that I saw uh, last summer, they were gutted. There's nothing in them because we've done our best to make sure that Iran can't get their hands on any, you know, surplus parts. But rumor has it that there's some pretty damn good Tomcat pilots and they've done their own modifications to the Tomcat and uh, I would imagine it's probably pretty formidable still, but, you know, I don't know how well a Tomcat's going to do against a stealth aircraft either, though. I think some F-15s would be in trouble, or some F-16s, you know what I mean, in that scenario. But, uh, not so sure about how a Tomcat would do against an uh, F-22 or an F-35. I think it would be an unfair fight um, and the Tomcat would lose. It had its moment, you know what I mean? I still think it's the best damn module in DCS because it's so much fun to fly. So I'm slowly whittling away these targets here. There's not too many left, which is good. But this is the kind of thing I suggest to do when you want to get the hang of something, you get a new module, jump into these practice missions and just start blowing shit up, man. That's all you can do. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Like I said, I think the hardest thing for me in the A-10 is just getting used to the fact that it's so damn slow. But it looks beautiful over this Normandy map, especially after they redid Normandy like they did. So I'm aiming for 32 of 32 this time. I think last time I got 30 of 32 before I quit the mission. Looks like there's only three left, so... So my only thing is is is, is losing the reticle at the top of the HUD like that. That's kind of annoying. It's like, and I move in and I still miss it, you know? Pull up, pull up. Now is that it, or is it this guy? No, I think it's that. One by one, taking them out. I'm looking forward to giving this a shot in VR, too. 
I haven't touched VR for like a week, man. Since I started doing these videos a little differently, I've been doing them at 1080p and not the super ultra wide resolution to kind of make it easier. People have been saying they like that better, so you know, I'll continue to do that. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Ooh, that was a steep one. Okay, what do I have? Two left? Damn. Let's pull it around. Yeah, I know. Too tight. The trees definitely look better in here, though. Oh, look. One of them did go, so there's only one left. Pull up, pull up. Okay. Where is he? I can't see him in those damn trees. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Where is it? He's hiding in the tree. Maybe if I come at him from this angle, I might hit him better. Ooh, I was low, too. About 800 feet. There we go. He went poof. And that should be all she wrote. All right. All right, let's jump back and see what our results are. 32 of 32. Very good. Nice. All righty, guys. I'm going to leave it at that. I think that was a pretty good run. Uh, again, that's just screwing around with the GAO 8, playing around with the different reticles, getting the feel of this thing a little bit better. I'm going to leave it at that, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Feel free to hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. And until next time.